Scott Narver, what's in the news this week? Oh, well, uh, in uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, um, uh, Muddy, Muddy Mone, Muddy, Muddy Mone lost her title. Who? Uh, Mani, Mas, Masamati's Mone. Money, money, mo- money, monies. Do you mean Sasha Banks? Yeah, that's who she was, but now she's uh, uh, ma- ma- Manicotti uh, Money. All right, well, I guess fucking Macho Money on. Pal- Can we do in WWE Encyclopedia instead? Ops, fucking movie. WWE Encyclopedia Part 10 today on Pro Wrestling Powskis. <laughs> Scott Narver. Hey, Jiggly Bacon. Oh, you got, you changed it right after I switched over to the live stream. So for just a second, everybody saw your real background. Ew, gross. How are you today, bud? It's all about false facades. I'm great. Speaking of which, how are you? (laughs) Would that be a facade if it's behind you? I'm, I, all that encompasses me is a facade. Um, that you know what that tracks. I believe it. Um, How are you? I'm I'm great, especially because we are joined as over as o as over. You know what? As over. It's wrestling that still tracks. It's a wrestling podcast. I can say as over. Yeah. Um, uh, by the super exclusive Patreon only live stream. I see we've got uh, Mike Lucas. We've got Tim Redbeard. Thanks to everybody who joins us here in these live streams that we do these recordings of our podcast uh, people are trickling in as it's known what's been tweeted out it's been noted in our discord so we were going like oh gotta log on gotta yeah. ignore my family gotta step out of church gotta uh walk out of golden corral they're they're, they're you know changing their lives yeah i just gotta right I, I just gotta say uh uh i really like i really like that we did this those years ago and that we just do the shows live because it's really fun having other people to chat with other than you and your facade. Oh, my facade. It is shallow, to say the least. Uh, and of course, we have to acknowledge her current PWP world champion. Which way do I do it? It's over there. There we go. Boom. Point that way. Uh, current PWP world champion, Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate. Uh, of course, Andrea will defend her title on the what's that next week's program? That'll be next week. Um, really? Yeah. Uh, she will defend a title for the first week of May to see who is the May championship Palski. But the next week is not May. Yeah, it is. Today's the 25th. Oh, I'm sorry. Not today. Yeah, today's the 25th, technically. The next episode it- comes out on... Now who's got a facade? No, the next episode comes out on May 2nd. It's the 23rd, everybody. We're alive. I mean, yeah, I know. But the, you know, like the releases to the pod feed, that's when the championship. So, by the way, like if you win. This is why I'm not in charge of that part. Right. Because I'd be like, oh, no, that's that's not if right. If you win during the live stream here, you don't technically like it's like when they used to a title would be one at a house show where they don't like you know, nobody knows until it goes lo- until it goes uh, on the pod feed on a Tuesday. There's like those few you know, days there where it's like you're a, you're an unknown champion. Like nobody, I feel like that's my whole career, <laughs> but nobody knew I'm an unknown champion. Unless you were in the garden, you didn't know that diesel won the title until you watched Monday night raw. Right. Cause they filmed it. Yeah. So that's why like only people who really are aware of the champion is the people who join us live or the cameraman. I'm the cameraman, I think technically. So are you, you're the camera. We're both cameramen here. Well, I mean, in Dave Man Maze, that's who I am. I'm the cameraman, which is the one of the worst credits to have when you put it on a resume. Oh. You have an acting resume, and you're like cameraman, and then someone would read it and go, "What? Well, uh, no, what's your acting? That is what? What do you do acting? Like, no, I. That was the name of the guy. It was cameraman. Oh, I'm so sorry. That's really terrible. <laughs> I never thought about how awful that is. Um, so I give up. Uh, people seem to be 
uh, fully experiencing the program in the chat, even though YouTube is telling me that we are not, uh, we have a poor connection. It says they're not receiving enough video to maintain smooth streaming. I think YouTube is lying. Fuck you, YouTube. Maybe we'll go to TikTok. What do you think about that? Oh, we'll be like the youths. Mm -hmm. Um, Listen, but here's the thing is we don't, we're too old for TikTok. We don't TikTok. We book. That's what Mm. we do. We like to book. We don't even look stuff up on the internet. We use good old fashioned encyclopedias. You see what I did there, Scott? Yeah, we're on TikBook. TikBook. Um, it is about that time. We haven't done this since Big Book. Since that would have been better. Pick book? Big book. Big book. Big book instead of TikTok. Uh Big Book is just a book that Bic Pen sends out every year to let you know like what the new pen lineup is this season. Yeah, nailed it. Oh man, let's stop the show there. Um, excellent connection, YouTube says now. Uh, <laughs> just in time for the, just for that shitty joke. Just in time for the tenth edition of WWE Encyclopedia. Not, of course, the tenth edition of the print thing, but the tenth time that we've cracked this edition open. Scott, do you want to explain? And I think it's your turn this time because I went last time and we've been going. Uh, you know, I do think so. Do you want to explain to anybody who might be listening for the first time as if that happens anymore? Uh, what we're doing, or do you want to just skip that altogether? We have the WWE Encyclopedia. We're going to crack it open on a random page, and then with what we see on those two pages, we will discuss memories, thoughts, controversies, personal interactions, uh, sexcapades, uh. whatever it may be that we or our listeners who are involved in our chat right now have the the involved with those superstars or wrestlers, as it may be. Um, all right. Well, without further ado, I'm going to crack this bad boy open. No more do. No more do. Um, do I go early? Do I go beginning of the alphabet? Do I go end of the alphabet? Do I go right in the middle? I'm just going to go like that. Boom. I just put my finger into this page right here and we got. Oh, all right. I feel like this is a weird one to get for this, but. Pay-per-views and special events. There's a a two-page spread, if not more than that, that says pay-per-views and special events. Mm -hmm. So this, let's see, what is it? Let me read the actual under thing here. For for over 30 years, WWE has kept itself on the cutting edge of primetime entertainment, it says. Wow, WWE. If I didn't believe, if I didn't know any better, I think that they wrote this this own book about themselves. Uh, I'd say that's true. I mean, how's that? No, you're not wrong. Um, Even Monday Night Raw, very innovative. They have a show. True. They eventually went live. It's a weekly show. It's been going on for fucking ever. Oh, pay per view game is all the, changed. The by champ now. is here. Uh, Andrew Beeler just jumping into the chat. Current PWP champ, Pollen Hate. Uh, hi, Andrew. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we just cracked open the WWE Encyclopedia. By the way, I forgot to say the pages. We are in pages uh, 268 and 269. Giggity, giggity. Now, here's the thing is this continues. For, yeah, but that's not how this works. I know, but it continues for so many pages. You're cheating. You're you're cheating right now. You, this is unprecedented of you just going like, I'm going to thumb through this. But thing. wait, I'm just curious to see how many pages it goes. 277. So it's an encyclopedia. It goes on forever. There are 11 pages, which which might mean... That at some point we will just get a different page of other pay-per-view events. So should we just do the ones that are listed on this? Because the pay-per-view events yeah. themselves are in alphabetical order. So we are. That's how we've done this forever. A through C of pay-per-view events is what we've gotten. Yeah. Um, That's like you looking at wrestlers and going, all right, well, we got just some A superstars here. I mean, there's more A's so we could keep. Going through and talking about the rest of these A's I, and all these I other don't know. pages. I disagree with that premise because it is a greater category because we are technically under no. P for pay-per-view and special events. But I understand what you're saying. Anyways, I want to read this because this is a uh, I I like that they acknowledge. Think, th- think about it logistically, Jake. We'll never get to all of them. No, not even remotely close. Although in the episode, if we were to cover all of the pages, um, since we should deal with what we have. It, with the advent of the WWE Network, it says, the term pay-per-view has been rendered a misnomer as a subscription-based service delivers each monthly spectacular as part of its overall package for the measly cost of nine ninety nine dollars a month. That's what it used to be, idiots. But while the business model has been turned on its ear, the action has only intensified. 
These are the marquee events that have thrilled spectators through WWE's fascinating evolution. Uh, so the first one up is Armageddon. 99 to 2000, 2002 to 2008. They took a time off. There was no 2001 Armageddon. They took a year off there. Yeah. You, you, can you figure out why? Um, Something to do with the Mayans, probably. Mm, yeah, they don't know how to fly planes. Yeah. Uh, All right. The December pay-per-view of Armageddon has uh, has changed. Uh, I, I will say Andrew Biller says, Jake, can I dramatically change the show and pick a new page since I am champ? If we hadn't already opened, to, if you would have joined on before we picked the page, I would have just been like, yeah, pick a number. Uh, but I feel like now we're too in it. Scott, do you agree? Yeah, your your rivalry with Andrew Beeler continues. That's not a rivalry. I actually really like that idea, and uh, I wish that I would have seen it sooner. Um, so it is. But uh, do what are see? This is where your knowledge of wrestling is going to shine over mine because I don't remember what happened at what event. When I th- at Armageddon's, there was a six man Hell in a Cell match. You remember that? Uh, nope. Also, that's not one of the highlighted matches. Oh, uh, is uh, the the cat taking off her bikini top? Is that one of the highlighted that does, moments of Armageddon? That does not sound like Armageddon. That sounds like Paradise. It was pretty good. <laughs> Tim Redbeard in the chat says, typical champ strolling in as if you own the joint. <laughs> um, uh, the six man... Hell in a Cell match is what my brain goes to when I think Armageddon. That's that's a pretty big and significant one. I want to say, uh, no, maybe that was a No Way Out. Um, yeah, that never mind. That that's the big that's the biggest match at Armageddon I can think of. I'm sure there's a, a Triple H and Shawn Michaels one uh, that I can't remember amongst their series. So that's also none. Of, so that. They're, they list Armageddon moments, right? And I think for each of these, they list like, oh, here's some moments from these events throughout the years. And nothing that you had said is so far in Armageddon uh, listed as their moments. Which I think is kind of interesting because it shows you how hard branding wrestling products is. <laughs> I mean, Armageddon, Hell in the Cell, six people, Rikishi thrown onto a truck full of hay. Oh, That's I do. Big deal. I do remember the Rikishi being thrown on the truck full of hay. Oh, wait a minute. That's one of the moments. You nailed it. Oh, you got to read well, it. Well, because you know what? I just read. They don't say what the match is. I thought this was a list of matches. It just says Rikishi takes a perilous fall from the top of a cell onto the bed of a truck in the year 2000. Perilous. That's it. It was perilous. Yeah. It's a choke slam. I feel like choke slam would have been easier to write than what perilous. What if they wrote it P-E-R-I-L-E-S-S? It wasn't. There was not a lot of peril. It was mostly perilous, to be perfect. Honest. It's perilous. He was also almost paralyzed. Uh, do you want, to, you want to know what else happened at Armageddon's? Sure, hit me. John with Cena it. unveils the U.S. Championship spinning belt in 2004 at Armageddon. At Armageddon, Ooh. Evolution claims all available championships in 2003. All available ones. <laughs> yeah, I. But wait, what does that okay, mean? I because remember that. if another person has a title, does that mean it's not available? <laughs> That's a w- maybe available on the show. I I, I think that was word. a time when it was pretty simplified. There was a there was a world champ on either show. Right. There was the world. Ch- so Triple H had the world heavyweight the WWE title and then tag champs, and that was pretty much it. Oh wait, no, no Intercontinental. Intercontinental. So Orton has Intercontinental, and then Batista and Flair have tag titles. And h- so United States Championship was on the other show, but they were all it. Raw guys. Got it. Got it. Uh, a group of raw dogs they were. Joey Mercury sustains severe facial injuries when he is inadvertently struck by a ladder in 2006. So they don't mention that one either. That's the tag team ladder match where the ladder gets where um, saw where Finn Balor goes. Yeah, that ain't nothing. And, you know, gets his face busted open the ladder years later. Uh, by the way, Tim Red... Stop throwing ladders at each other's faces. How about that? Tim Redbeard in the chat also adding moments. Aerosmith screeched at us about not wanting to miss a thing. 
The WWE yes. owned all the championships. So that statement. Animal crackers <laughs> uh, crawling across Liv Tyler's belly. Um, many, many Armageddon and moments. And her booby, if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, no. Yeah, didn't he go? No he booby. went like up her little bra booby. Bra booby. Jeff Hardy wins his very first WWE championship in 2008. Wow. That is later than I thought it would have been. He was not there all the right, time. Right, right. And then when he was there, he wasn't there all the time. By the way, that was the f- last ever Armageddon. It was 2008. So one could argue that Jeff Hardy won the title and even Armageddon had its own Armageddon. and was like, yeah, this is, this is done. Yeah, he won in a triple threat. Who else was in that match with him? Do you remember? Edge and uh, Triple H. Oh, yeah, 2008 was uh, that was the year I came back. So if if this was their this was their January pay per view, it used to be December. December. Oh, that would make sense. But they they probably changed it here and there. That would make sense. Yeah. And then of course they started then branding more special event pay per views. So TLC took over. I mean, if uh, it started in '99, they clearly were like, oh, it's like the Y2K stuff. Like, let's do an Armageddon December this month, the last month of the 1990s. Well, it's Armageddon on your wallet because you spent all your money on Christmas. There's that too. Mike Lucas says, Jeff Hardy retired Armageddon. You sure did. Um, all in all, do you feel Armageddon is a brand name that they should revive? I liked it for what it was. I, I, like, I like a pay-per-view. I like a wrestling pay-per-view title to feel like there's anger and animosity involved that can be tied to a match. Right. So when I feel that they're, oh, we're having Armageddon. It's a six man hell in the cell. Like, holy fuck, right. that's Armageddon. That's crazy. Yes. I, I got to see Armageddon. I like it when like Judgment Day is a subtitle for the main event where somebody has to face the Undertaker and they're going to face their Judgment Day. Like, when it's very specifically the branding of a main event fight, the way that you would call, you know, you would give a fight a nickname, make that the name of the show. And then everything else on the card yeah. is also on the card. Because if I can't get it by look, it, it has to be a name. So when I think of like an AEW full gear, I go, okay, right. that doesn't really mean anything to me. I get that the story is, oh, it's, it's an, it's, Someone had said something about wearing their full gear to the show. Right. And that became the joke. <laughs> and then graphically, they make it about gears. Right. And cogs and wheels and shit. But it doesn't mean anything no. to me. It ha- It's never tied in. It's never had any significance to when I see the show. Double or nothing does. Right. Because they go, oh, it's in Vegas. Well, you got a casino theme. And while there is no double or nothing match or something that... You're putting it on the line, like all everything's at stake. I feel like it could be there if you wanted to capitalize right. on that. Well, it it also is self referential to the previous to all in, right? You go all in and gambling, and then you lose all your money. So you go, all right, double or nothing. Whereas I'm going all out. I'm <laughs> whipping out my dick and see if I can get That's some money. What that means yes, yeah, so all out, all out. Yeah. Many many Ric Flair pay per views should have been titled all out. Um, that's a, it's a post show. Well, speaking of, uh, titles being brought back, uh, the next one up is backlash, which according, oh, I love me a backlash. according to this is, uh, listed as 1999 to 2009. Okay. Um, when I think of backlash, I just think of the swinging hooks. Yeah, that's, that's I think of the swinging hooks and I think of one of my favorite pay-per-views of all time from start to finish. And is that the T- is that that was the very first TLC or was that a SummerSlam? Am I misremembering that? That is a SummerSlam. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Forgiven. Um, I like the little Backlash 2000, I think, is one of the best pay-per-views from start to finish. It has everything uh, that has. And we've watched a match from it. That has um, for a watch long early watch long. It was uh, Scotty Tuati versus Dean right, Marenko for, for the, the European light heavyweight. Oh, light heavyweight. All right. Uh, yeah. In what is essentially a throwaway match on the card. That's exceptionally good. Mm-hmm. 
uh, that the year 2000 did make their list of backlash moments. But Stone Cold returning. You would think. Nope. The Dudleys put Trish Stratus through a table. 2000. I because I think that might have been the first. Right. So that was also a big deal. Um, there's a lot in that show that happens and everything escalates and the crowd goes crazier and crazier and crazier. And it's, it's a fucking great pay-per-view. So yeah, I feel like, uh, cause it's now just branded WWE back. I'm sorry. WrestleMania backlash. Isn't it? I think it went back to backlash. Did they? I'm going to check that right now. That's, cause that's it was happening that like this weekend or some shit like that. Is it tonight? Tomorrow? Oh, really? I think that's soon. I don't know. Cause it's already, I don't know. Anyways. Um, maybe I'm wrong. In Puerto Rico? It does say, for many of WWE's most barbaric rivalries, WrestleMania is only the beginning. Victory on the grandest stage often lends to backlash from those seeking revenge. For a decade, this pay-per-view was the first major event after WrestleMania and served as the scene for retribution. <gasps> retribution never even came out on a backlash, though. I, didn't, I don't remember. Uh, we don't know that for I sure. I don't remember Slapjack there once. So it is now WWE Backlash Got again. It. Okay, so it was only last year because I think last year it was called. So it was only one year, maybe. No, there was a couple really? of years. Like it was WrestleMania Backlash, the greatest wrestling match of all time. <laughs> was one of oh, them. Oh wait, that was and it, and it was WrestleMania Backlash for at least two more years. Uh, so I think someone went okay. That's this is a bit much. Let's just call it fucking Backlash. It makes sense. I I love the name Backlash. Uh, it's great. It is because it lets you know as a fan, like when I was getting back into it, it let me know, oh, something previously happened. Right. That was a big deal. And now I'm seeing the aftermath. So I might want to go watch the other thing to understand what the backlash is from all of this. Again, usually that thing is mania based on what they've written in their encyclopedia here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, again, many fond memories of backlash, not just because of swinging hooks, which I fucking love. The swinging hooks of backlash. Um, the backlash feels like a big deal where I don't necessarily always think the title is going to change hands again, but there's usually some high stakes stuff where I go like, Oh, they might get a win back now. Right. Um, do you have any other guesses as to what some of the moments are that they've highlighted? Uh, I'm trying to, uh, from 2000, I'm thinking they're not going to do any other than Stone Cold nope, returning. They, they only do one but, from any given year. So they did the Dudleys in 2000. There's no other 2000s. Okay, so 99 would be Mankind. What is it? He's thrown through a window. It's not on the list, but that's great. From Big it's Show? Great memory, but no, that's not on the list. Would it be uh, easier if I gave you the, the years? The Rock taking the camera and giving the middle finger uh, to the crowd and then turning and seeing Stone Cold going, what the, f and then getting a stunner. Nope, but that's a good moment too. You have a very good memory for specific, see, this is where I'm talking about, like, I couldn't tell you what event that happened at. I remember it visually, like I could see it happening in my head. I couldn't tell you it was at a backlash. There's a crazy hardcore, bat no, that's 2000 also. So, never mind. so I'll give you the years. No, 2001 okay. has, a, has a crazy hardcore thing and jeff hardy jumps off the fucking hook that's not so that's what i remember that's the swinging hooks that i like i remember it because of that very specific year which i thought was a tlc but they had a couple of years they added spikes on I that thought, year. i thought that was a tlc match but i guess not um no that's hardcore so their shit. 2001 notation is the two-man power trip stone cold and triple h seize control oh. of all major championships by defeating the brothers of destruction for the world tag team titles that were available at the that time. Were available. Actually, this is, it doesn't say that. It says all major championships, which the other one says that were available. So there's clearly a difference between Evolution and the two-man power trip. Which, by the way, was that, the, the, that what they called themselves on air? It was just starting to be that. It was, it was the time in which they would pepper in a name. Got it. You know, they weren't going like, we're the two-man power trip. We're going to do they, this. They didn't make that. a lower third. Cole was just saying no. it on air or some shit like that. I don't even think merch was a thing right. because Triple H got injured so quickly into it that it didn't. It, it You kind of knew it was two man power trip if you were watching everything. Right. right. Um, otherwise, I don't I think it was barely mentioned. It might have been one of those things where JR says like, oh, look, at these guys are on a two man power trip. Right. Got it. 
and you go uh, like, that's oh, not, that, that worked. Okay. I like that. I think that's who they are. Um, they also have a 2002, a 2007, and a 2009 highlight. Hmm. Yeah, I don't can't pull it off the top of my 2002, head. 2002, Hulk Hogan wins the WWE Championship for the first time in nine years. Hollywood Hulk Hogan. It doesn't say that. It just says Hulk Hogan, but yeah. But it's that's significant because he's the turn has happened so quick from WrestleMania. They had to fly and get his gear for the next show. They had to go get his Hulk Hogan really? gear. But he was still Hollywood. That And then Triple H had the whole... So, so, you know, think of the time of Cody, right? Like that we're in okay. with Cody's going to win the title. Cody's going to win the title. Holy shit. He's gonna win. He didn't fucking win. This is the worst shit right. ever. So for any fan of Triple H going into WrestleMania 18 and, oh my God, he's going to win the title. We won the Rumble. He's going to do this. He's going to be Chris Jericho. He's going to become the undisputed champion. Holy shit. He did it. One month later, Hollywood Hulk Hogan is so fucking popular. They go, get the title off of Triple H. Wow. Get it on Hogan immediately right that's what they did so triple h had it for a month wow i don't remember i don't even remember that so he has it for a month and then hogan has it for a month because it's like look we just need to do this for the feel good right. moment we want to have hogan win we again can't, because he hasn't yeah because it's been a decade we can't keep doing this and then uh evil undertaker the biker right. taker takes it off of hogan corp- was that that wasn't corporate taker yet was it that was like when he was aligned with vince yeah. yeah, this wasn't gotcha. that. This was Undertaker flat out fucking chains up Hogan by the ankles to his motorcycle and drags right. him around. Right, the right, right. They do the old Western spot in the back. Right. right. Well, ex- except Hogan doesn't no, turn. not at all. He's just. He's just going, yeah. my hips, Ow, my hips. Um, can you take a guess at what uh, Mr. McMahon did in 2007? Is that him and Sean? Him and God, uh, God, the tag team match with God. No, but uh, that we still did. We ever watch that? I no, think we haven't. You watched told that. me about it. I've never seen that, and you told me about it. I think we. I feel like we need to watch that on a watch along. Okay. Um. Uh, yeah. Mr. McMahon wins the ECW Championship in 2007. Okay. Yeah, I was definitely not watching at all during this. Who did he head shaved from WrestleMania of the Battle of the Billionaires? And then Lashley oh, had Lashley. the ECW championship. Got it. And the last and this is this is this is a prime example. This is the backlash as to what happened of Mr. Right. Man got his head shaved. Right. So then this occurs, which is fucking nuts, but it's so here it lets you know weird shit goes on at backlash. There's a which 2009 like. match that I do remember because I do remember thinking like Every now and then, the big uh, like scene piece, I think, is stupid. This was one that I went, that was fucking awesome. Uh, in 2009, Big Show tosses John Cena through the spotlight, the exploding spotlight, <laughs> um, allowing Edge to win the last man standing match for the World Heavyweight Championship. That's the match where Edge, like, uh, I'm sorry, where uh, Cena does the AA to both of them, or at least, at least as a fireman carry to both of them, which is insane because... Big Show by himself. I don't think no, so. No, you don't think that's... I think that was Mania. No. They, they had two triple threats. And then Big Show comes threats. back for revenge. They had two triple threat matches, those three? I thought, no. I think this is just Big Show shows up and does that. Oh, why would Big okay. Show, God, so he wasn't in the match. Got it. Yeah, he just comes Got out it. and tries to murder someone. And the referee, who's doing a really good job, by the way, Listen. goes... I got to count to 10 first, then I'll see he whether might, or not uh, there's a murder on my listen, hands. Listen, the glass of the big giant spotlight might have pierced his neck and he's bleeding out. He'll last at least 10 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Then we can get some medical attention. But first, I got to determine a winner. That's my job. All righty. Let's move on. This is why I don't like them stopping everything for blood when it's he threw him through a spotlight and exploded. One. Well, hold on. Two. One, two. <laughs> three. Uh, Mike Lucas, thank you very much. Mania 25 for the U.S. title was the triple threat where they were all. Yeah. Okay. Dog. And not the world heavyweight. And Tim. That seems like that'd be weird for the U.S. title for those. Tim three. Redbeard. I don't I don't think that's right. No, Tim Redbeard says Vince wins the ECW championship, starts wearing the do rag, drops the N word, calls Sabu something a Taliban or something like that. Awful. It was very interesting times. 
Uh, the Vince saying the N word was, was a different time. He had a full head of hair. That was when John Cena was really hitting. Oh, that was when he was doing his vanilla ice, but cool thing. Yeah, right. w- yeah, but way cooler. So that might have been before that. Um, uh, he says world title was Triple H and Orton at that event. That was Kevin, what about the WWE title. <laughs> so many titles. titles in. Um, all right. While well, you guys look at that or fight that out, I'm gonna move on here. Bad Blood is the next pay per view and special event. Ninety seven. Cool, but backlash this year returns, Jake. For the f- that's what I wanted to get to. So it returns Saturday, May six. Oh, okay, so it's uh, next weekend. Right. So not an ad. Um, but a- as of right now, the card is Cody Rhodes versus Brock Lesnar. Uh, Rhea Ripley allowing Zelina Vega uh, to do a lot of moves to her for the women's title. Uh, Matt Riddle and uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn versus the Bloodline. Bobby Lashley and Bronson Reed to... Uh, in a triple threat against Austin Theory for the U.S. title. Seth freaking Rollins versus Omas. And uh, Bad Bunny will perform for her in an hour and a half. So none of that feels like backlash from Mania, unfortunately. That's the exact opposite of what we were talking about, what we like about backlash as a title. None of that. I would argue the tag team championship thing. KO and Zayn is maybe the only thing, but... Yeah, the, the, as of right now, that feels backlash, but this is also not a full card. Uh, Mike Lucas in the chat. Scott's right. It was the World Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. Oh, Scott's right. Those are his favorite two words. All right. And uh, the Bad Bunny thing will also be backlash because that all involved Dominic and right, Ray right, right, and all no, that. That's fair. So we have some backlashiness. Um. All right. Another great title for a, for a pay-per-view. Bad Blood. Uh, Bad Blood was the first one was 97 and then they brought it back in 2003 to 2004. So there's only three Bad Bloods ever. I feel like that's I remember there being more, but that's crazy. I think there was only ever three. So the first Bad Blood is in your house. Uh, the first Hell in the Cell. And it's in your house Bad Blood, the debut of Kane. Yeah. So the first Hell in the Cell, the debut of Kane. Um, the, the Hell in the Cell being constructed that way basically to involve right. Uh, the debut yeah. of Kane. Um, so that one is historic. There's and then 2000 another one with a Hell in a Cell. That's the 2003 they, they one both, with Triple H and and Nash with Foley as the referee. They both do it. They every both other Bad Bloods are also a Hell in a Cell with Triple H. So it be, and Goldberg yep, exactly. It was Kevin Nash. Oh wait a minute, Triple H. Emerging victorious both years in Hell in a Cell matches against his former click pals, Kevin Nash and Shawn Michaels, respectively. Then why is Goldberg on the cover? Oh, okay. No, I was guessing Goldberg for the other one. I couldn't remember the other but one was, was Shawn gotcha. Michaels. Gotcha, but Goldberg is on the cover. Goldberg and Triple H are on the cover of the back of the Bad Blood one they're showing. Maybe he was in a different match, and they're like, well, these two guys are both on it. They're not fighting each other, but... Well, let's see. What year is that one? 2003 and four. With the other two bad bloods. Oh, because that bad blood, 2003, what was what was Goldberg doing? Let's see here. I don't think it was, I think he was done with The Rock at that point. Uh, Goldberg. Oh, Chris Jericho. Got it. Didn't make the poster. Sorry, Chris. So they, so they had Goldberg pretty fresh, and so they were throwing him on posters at that point. Right. Because I don't think they had it in time for his debut and all he, that stuff. Because they right. always... Shot the yep. photos, all that shit way before him. Signed he it. is mean mugging so hard in that poster, by the way. Goldberg. <laughs> I don't like it. Vince McMahon doesn't feel like my fake dad yet. Um, Anything else to say about Bad Blood? You want to move on to the next one? I like that one, too, as a name. Great, I think it's, name. A, it's a good yeah. name. And not a big the Hell in the Cell association with it certainly works. Not a big fan of the logo of Bad Blood. The drop of blood? Yeah, I don't know. It's just, it's a, uh, I mean, I, I get it. It's so, bad blood written out of blood. I feel like it, maybe it's a little bit too obvious for me. Maybe that's why I don't like it. It's a lot what, what if it had like a, like a robber's mask <gasps> on it? Bad blood. A little bandit. You know. What about like a red, something to make it like bad. a red bandana, like a blood from the bloods and the crypts. Oh, and like a Vince McMahon mustache. Yeah. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Um, So the next one just says 2013 on. 
So that means it's still mm. happening. WWE Battleground, your favorite video game. Oh, man. Wait what a, a fucking shit-ass game that I, is. I just realized that it's singular. Battleground. Not Battlegrounds. Oh, the game is Battlegrounds. Yeah, but the pay-per-view is Battleground singular. Interesting. All right. So when I typed it in, I it love, brought up the video game. Like, hey, here's the game. You want to buy I, it? Please. I love this, by the way. It says, initially instituted in 2013 as a fall pay-per-view, the first Battleground more than lived up to its name. The WWE Championship <laughs> began and ended the night vacant after Big Show coerced by the authority, inserted his massive fist into Daniel Bryan and Randy Orton's WWE Championship match for the vacated title. Oh, man, he could have put his fist anywhere, and that's where he put it? Along the way, Rhodes Brothers, Cody, and Goldust preserved their family legacy and their jobs with a tag team victory over the Shield. That's a great match. I think, did we watch that one? Is that what that, that was, was I think from? that one that we must have watched from Battleground. That's where Big Show inserted his fist. Right. Uh, let's does. see here. Bray Wyatt versus Kofi Kingston. CM Punk versus Ryback. Oh. Ooh, I wonder if that's one of the times where Ryback hurt him. <laughs> there was only ever times. when There was not a time when he didn't. It's easier to say, I wonder if those were the times where he didn't hurt him. <laughs> Wasn't Curtis Axel versus R-Truth for the Intercontinental title. Uh, Mike in the chat. Wasn't Sammy versus Kevin at Battleground? I, it happened a few times. That sounds I right. I think that was the first significant one. Let yeah. me see if I can find that one here. That's probably 2017. I'll continue. Battleground became a July event in 2014 and 15. In its young history, it's been the settling. It's been the settling. Oh, the setting. I'm dumb. I put letters in that aren't there. <laughs> setting for shocking events such as Miz's unpredictable victory in a 19-man battle royal for the IC title in 2014 and... 2015 surprise return of Undertaker to seek revenge on Brock Lesnar. Oh, so that so it was setting up SummerSlam, I guess. July Battleground 2016 is Kevin, Kevin Owens, Owens right. versus Sami Zayn, right. and I think their first WWE right. one on one uh, pay per view like main yeah. roster, yeah, one on one match. I think like Battleground is probably tarnished by the game. But it seems like it's a perfectly fine, like, it seems like it has a decent amount of fun things that have occurred at it. Like, they've made it an important event, I guess, in the way that they do the best they can to make every event important. It doesn't seem like it has gone on forever from when I'd seen on Wikipedia. It went to 2017, and then NXT picked it up in, oh. for this so year, we, for May 28th. Interesting, so it hasn't been, so the game ruined it. <laughs> they were like, ah, oh, we gotta separate ourselves from that title. Give it to the, give it to the kids. Give it to the kids and and uh, as a punishment, not as something good. Um, I'm looking to see on WWE site if if there is indeed some missing battlegrounds. But that was a that was a Punjabi prison match with uh, Jinder and Randy. Were there? And I'm oh, right. always a fan of the Punjabi prison. I really like that idea for a match, but I feel like every time it's been. Uh, I think that one was probably. Did we watch that? Why do I have a recollection of watching that with you? Was it just because it was on when we were doing our coverage and we watched it and talked about it? Probably. I whisper it to you as you dream. <laughs> and then Randy oh, and then Randy Orton got stuck in the bamboo. How fitting of all the people now who need to be in a Punjabi prison match, Cody Rhodes. I don't understand. He's so American. Oh, got it. He's so American. You just got to find someone from, you know, India or someone nearby that could be an evil you know, villain from another land. Shinsuke Nakamura and Cody Rhodes in a Punjabi but prison it's not, match. Instead of Punjabi prison, it's uh, they just name it some sort of ethnic thing from not, no matter where the foreign villain is from. And they just use a different material. What was the Punjabi prison? Was it supposed to be bamboo? Yeah. Which, by the way, that could be like Japan as well. Like bamboo is all over the place. Um, well, China. Wouldn't it be China over Japan? Does Japan have a lot of bamboo? Because I don't know. China's got them. China pandas. does. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not one of those. It sounds like you could book. For I'm wrestling. not Dale. We'll have to ask Dale Rutledge. We don't have our resident Japanese expert here. Yeah, our, our 
our fauna expert. <laughs> um, in any case, uh, what's the American version of the Punjabi prison? The kennel from hell. It's the kennel from hell match. That's what that is. Yeah. 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 We have a dog. Um, here in the, all right. In the American. The next one listed. Oh man, Bowie would be perfect for one of the kettle matches. for hell match. Why? Because he would wander around and not do anything and just drop a deuce on the outside of the ring. Mm hmm. Oh, these docile and he's gigantic. These docile dogs. That was such a stupid. I can't believe they did that. Um, I can. Okay. The next title listed in the W Encyclopedia under pay per views and special events is a thing that I want more of. And that is, but WWE loves to, listen, they're a big corporation. They love their trademarks. They want to sell branding and merchandise. So they're not going to do this, but I like it when it's a one-time event. Again, like I said earlier, named after the main event. This was WWE Networks. I think it was their first ever network exclusive premium live eventy thing. WWE Beast in the East. Yeah, that was a one-off. Yeah, see, I get that this wasn't necessarily the most important of events. There were some fun things that occurred at it, uh, but I like this. Hey, bees in the east. Set the table for Brock Lesnar squashing Kofi Yeah, Kingston. and it wasn't, actually, that wasn't even the squash. Oh, that's why you said set the table. Yes. Kofi actually yeah. put up a fight in this match. Mm, did he? Yeah. He, like, it lasted more than 35 seconds. Let's see. How how long do you think that match was? Including From bell including bell. him beating up Xavier and Big E or just the match? B bell to bell. A minute and 36 seconds. 8.16. Eight minutes? See, okay. You, see, you made me second guess myself. I remember it being longer than it was. Then you... That's what I like to do. Um, you made me think I was dumb. Uh... WW Network entered uncharted territory on July 4th, 2015, when it held the for the first time ever a live WWE broadcast from Japan, emanating from inside a sold out uh I, I'm gonna butcher this. Uh Ryogo, Ryogoku Sumo? Ryogoku Sumo? You sound like you might know that title. Ryogoku. Uh uh Finn Balor. Oh, the event's promotion revolved around Brock Lesnar. Japanese fans were, filed, were filled with excitement and anticipation for what the beast would unleash on the other side of the world. He not only did he demolish... But he wasn't even the main event. No, was it Finn and uh, Samoa Joe for the NXT title? No, it was Finn and Kevin, Kevin Owens, Owens for the NXT Sorry, title. Right. But that's not even the main event. <gasps> what was it? Was Dolph Ziggler and John Cena defeated Kane and King Barrett. Right. It was a feel-good... Which no, John Cena. in that instance, yeah, that does seem to me like uh, uh, a beast in the East was the hook, but we're not even going to put that on last. <laughs> that seems like a mistake. Yeah, it's it, that was a weird event because uh, I think it, from what I'm seeing here, it's five matches that were aired because there are two right dark matches. dark matches. Maybe they're on YouTube or some shit right. like that. But it's, so what was on air was Chris Jericho. Versus Neville, Nikki Bella versus Tamina and Paige, Brock Lesnar versus Kofi Kingston, Finn Balor versus Kevin Owens, and Dolph Ziggler and John Cena versus Kane and King Barrett. I think this was the beginning of what you called Elseworlds. Well, no, the to me this was the beginning of the like we were, we're releasing the home video footage on as a right premium live event the. Um, I'm trying to remember the the Starcades or the other things that they started right. to acquire the names and they would have a two hour event and you go, Yeah, but this doesn't mean it's anything. a house show. And you have so many other yeah, shows. We're gonna we're gonna tape this house show because it's a house show in a unique place. It's not just like some random arena in Missouri. It's like, oh, we're actually gonna go to Japan or we're gonna be in the UK or we're gonna be here. So let's put this what? on the network. They started doing it in the US really right. quickly. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, um, I'm trying to remember that like when they did star kids with the other right. stuff that they do these Southern shows and you go, yeah, but this is just, you're just filming a shitty show. And Elias is playing for 25 minutes right, of it. Right. And these are awful. And these quickly had the reputation of being awful. I don't know. I, there's something about me that kind of likes, I get that maybe these didn't deliver, but 
I, I recall this. I maybe I'm even though I in my brain I mistaked KO for Samoa Joe. I remember that being a big deal here. I remember because of Finn and Japan and them talking all about New Japan and the Japanese legends uh, whose name I don't remember like was like raised his hand and they did all the Japanese stuff and I was like oh this I remember it being a big deal and that's what stuck with me. I remembered obviously Brock Lesnar beating up all of New Day, but uh, like I I like this. I don't know this to me this is. If you're going to back in the day of paying 10 bucks for the network, this to me was like, oh, there's also these events that I can tune into that are happening live that maybe, like you said, don't have any bearings on Monday Night Raw come Monday. But it's this fun little extra thing where I get to be there for a house show or I get to be there for a thing that, you know, you wouldn't generally see otherwise. I'm looking to see if there was a Japanese legend who showed up and gave credit to Finn Balor. Tatsumi? Is that his name? It says Hideo Tami and Tatsumi, Tatsumi Fujinami, Fujinami were we also advertised to appear, but it doesn't say anything in the recap of. And then they came out and did a thing and said, hey, way to go, guy who's kind of wearing blackface. You did what it. What if you just Googled their names and Finn Balor just to find a photo? <laughs> Welcome. You're now officially yeah. looking for art for the podcast. <laughs> um... Uh, anything else to say about beast on the beast in the east i like the idea of it too i i just like Delivered. stuff you, you wish know, it was wwe stuff in right japan for sure. sure um but yeah i you know they should run with it um the next one is something that i was i'm not familiar with and the logo makes it seem like it's modern but it says it was 1986 Something called The Big Event. I feel like they remade the logo for the WWE Encyclopedia. Let me show you. Yeah, I recall. I have the VHS of The Big Event. Do you see? Oh, wait. No, you don't see shit. Hang on. I'm blocking my own camera. No. How do I show it to the camera? There it is. It's over here. Do you see the top? That's not a 1986 logo. That is. It is. Really? That was what it it was. Wow. Look Mm -hmm. at me being designist. Do you rec- so yeah, the Tatsumi Fujinami didn't oh, do right. anything. Well, I don't even know if he showed up to the show that he was advertised fantastic. for. Fantastic. <laughs> um Okay, well what do you what can you tell me about the big event since you had the VHS copy of it? I have the VHS of it, but I'm I got like a couple things mashed in my head and I don't know which one it is. There's one main event. I don't know if this is it. I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up. There's there's one main event where the show was outside and it rained oh. and it's the funniest oh, shit was, with like the wet blue ring where they're all slipping. Mm-hmm. I think you showed me something on a watch along from this. Another thing that sounds familiar. No, I think I just talked about it. I never oh, showed this may- to you because I, because I don't remember what it's we might've pulled it up then on YouTube and like watched it in a pre-show or something like that. Cause I remember watching footage because of you where they're just like slipping constantly. <laughs> So yeah, this is Hogan versus Orndor for the world title. There's a lot of stuff. There's 11 matches here. Not a lot of them go too long. But nothing particularly stands out. I'm trying to see if this is the one where it rained, but it doesn't say anything about that either. Um, Yeah, I mean, great advertising to make it seem like, hey, we got a big fucking thing, and this is before... This is 1986, so they had WrestleMania, and I think that's it. So they're trying to think Other. of, you know, n- names right. for shows. Big event. Uh, with a record 64,000 in attendance, it says. The big event pitted Hulk Hogan against Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff, who lost the match after Bobby Heenan attacked Hogan with a stool. I'm assuming that means he threw poop at him. <laughs> Yeah, like a just little a, monkey, just a big dog turd, <laughs> just a just a big Bowie sized turd. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I've never heard of that one before. But I again, I, the rain one sounds familiar. But maybe that's not what this is. Maybe you're misremembering that. Oh uh, no, I that's what I'm saying. I don't know if it is from this one Got or it. not. Well, according um, to this, it was from... only according to the encyclopedia. It only happened once. In 1986, there's no other dates listed for the big event. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm yeah. just trying to figure out what was the the reigning show. Right. Um. Well, moving on, what I think might be the worst 
WWE pay-per-view, in my opinion, because it ex- the title alone tells you nothing is actually on the line here. WWE bragging rights. A show that says, if you win here, nothing really matters. You just get to say you won, which, by the way, is every wrestling event ever. Yeah. 2009 to 2010. It only ran for two years, which I thought there was I thought it was more than that. So, you know what? Kudos for them for wrapping that up sooner than I thought they did. It seemed like that went on. It does feel like that went on forever. Maybe it's because they also, turned it into Survivor Series, and so our brain just feels like it continued, even though it didn't. Yeah, because it's because bragging rights. Yeah, it, it was an October event. It went into Survivor Series, and you're like, well, it's teams versus each other. So you already blew what Survivor Series right. was, and what are they winning that they can brag about? There was no the backlash or the bad blood. Right. Bragging rights didn't have any thing to brag about or they got something their show beat the other show okay so what didn't also i mean so even the uh (laughs) even the the encyclopedia knows it was trash um because it says you know (laughs) during the brand extension superstars took tremendous pride in competing for the superior brand in 2009, pay-per-view was introduced that would give both Red and Blue a chance to prove their worth over the other. The format of bragging rights was simple. Matches pitted Raw versus SmackDown. The winning brand for the night took home the bragging rights trophy for the year. In its inaugural year, the winning brand was decided by the total number of matches won. However, in 2010, the victory went to the winner of a seven-on-seven interpromotional elimination tag team match. Both years, it was SmackDown brand that took home the trophy. Despite the event's theme... Which is this is the word. Despite the event's theme, individual rivalries were not completely put on the back burner. What an interesting choice of words for the WWE Encyclopedia. In 2009, Cena and Randy Orton had one of their most grueling matches ever, a 60-minute Anything Goes Iron Man match that Cena won 6-5. to I don't know why I don't remember that. Kane buried Undertaker alive with the help of Nexus in 2010. That I do remember. Weird, but yeah, it is. I don't. I I wouldn't have connected those events to bragging rights. Obviously, I don't remember for some reason. I don't remember this. Although it was two thousand and nine, I would have been watching. But sixty minute anything goes Iron Man match, and that was Cena and Orton. Orton. I don't even. I believe that's some of Orton's worst facial reactions. We, when he's a crazy bad guy. He's right. got laughable shit that happens during that match. We talked recently about the AEW Iron Man match and about Iron Man matches in general. I don't even think we brought this one up, which shows you how forgettable it must be because there are not a lot of Iron Man matches. It's bad. Interesting. If it wasn't, I think it's if it wasn't bad. a sixty minute match, I'd be like, let's do it for a watch long. But I'm like, I don't know, it's a long time. Um, yeah. Anything else to say about bragging rights other than thank God it's over? Yeah, thank God it's over. And I'm. it's funny that we both thought it went on f- way longer than it did. Hmm. Uh, 1984, a great title if you lived up to it. <laughs> but because wrestling doesn't end, it's odd to call something the brawl to end it all. Again, unless it was very much like these people are going to be done with whatever the story is in the main event or whatever. This was 19. 19- well, cause there was the, uh, what is the one that I think precedes it? Uh, maybe shit. if I read, it'll tell me. Yeah, so this is real. will tell you, cause I'm thinking of Hogan versus Piper. Well, uh, the war to settle the score. All right. Well, let's, let's see. Oh, right. The so that, it seems like this would be a follow-up, but maybe I'm thinking too right. backlash. I would turn ahead to see if Ward said a score is in here, but that's cheating, according to you. So I'm not going to do that. Um, 1984, the brawl to end it all. Nearly a year before the inaugural WrestleMania event, Madison Square Garden was the scene for the brawl to end it all. Though Hulkamania was in full force by this time, and the Hulkster himself defended the WWE title against Greg Valentine, the only match that was televised on MTV. Interesting was the main event contested for the women's championship. Holy shit. A women's championship main event in 1984. 
Historic as much for the in-ring result as it was for the entertainment forces it united under the WWE banner, the match featured Wendy Richter challenging 28-year reign of the fabulous Moolah. But what truly made this a revolutionary moment in WWE lore was the involvement of pop sensation Cyndi Lauper. Fresh. I was going to say, wait a minute, hold on. What are they actually going to acknowledge right, yes. here? It's because they got the MTV yes, star exactly. involved in the finish. Fresh off of the success of her Girls Just Want to Have Fun music video, the Big Apple native became embroiled in a dispute with the video's co-star, Captain Lou Albano. To settle things, the warring, the warring personalities chose sides in the championship match with Lopner supporting Richter. After countless competitors tried for nearly three decades, Wendy Richter etched her name as the one to end Moolah's in insuperable is that a word insuperable insuperable rain insufferable sure. is what they should have wrote uh with this end came a new beginning as the infusion of the day's hottest music idol into wwe laid the groundwork for the rock and wrestling phenomenon that ultimately led to wwe's explosion of popularity i so and then like six months later or maybe a little bit like seven or eight months later, that's when they do the war to settle the score, oh. also on MTV. So, so this one didn't end at all. <laughs> this, that one, the, it was ended, but then it, well, it wasn't settled, which is odd because you would think that they're synonymous with one another. And this card is fucking weird. For the brawl or for the war? The okay. brawl. So, um, you know, there's a lot of just throwaway matches that it don't, it doesn't really mean anything. You know, like Iron Sheik versus Tony Correa, yeah. um, Bob Ackham versus Paul Vachon. We have some title matches, Tito Santana versus Bob Orton Jr. for the Intercontinental match. Uh, Hulk Hogan versus Greg Valentine for the World Heavyweight Championship. But here's, here's a fun one. Antonio Anoki in a championship match defeats Charlie Fulton. And it's a match for the WWF World Martial Arts Heavyweight Championship. What? That's that's new. Wait, I'm trying to look. I was not familiar w- with I'm that. I'm gonna look it up at all. Is there a belt? Do they make a belt for it? Yes. Say that again. WWF World Martial Arts Heavyweight Championship. It was established December 18th, 1978, and retired December 31st. 1989. What an Armageddon that was. Uh, it was a professional heavyweight championship in the World Wrestling Federation and later in New Japan Pro Wrestling. Created and awarded to Antonio Inoki by Vincent J. McMahon upon Inoki's arrival in America. The title was being known for contested matches billed as shoot wrestling fights. And it was contested solely in New Japan after the pro- promotion became unaffiliated with the WWF in 1985. It's a it's a rather lovely belt with like the silver. It's unique looking. And a guy. Yeah, there's like a little guy it's, doing this. Ah, I'm going to get you. I'm pretty sure it's just a, 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 a silhouette of Bruno San Martino. That was always his pose. He was this guy. Um, and, uh, interesting. That's crazy. Never even heard of the this. The reins. The reins of this. So Antonio Inoki has it. It's awarded by Vince J. McMahon, December 18th, 1978. And then um, someone who clearly uh, got Shotzi Blackheart's name wrong, Shota Chochisvili, won it in April 24th, 1989 at the event Battle Satellite in Tokyo Dome for the fifth round knockout. So they were round. Only to be one back. By Antonio Noki on May 25th, 1989. That sheds more light on this. It means it was contested under rounds, like boxing, or like, I guess, I don't know, do they do MMA in rounds as well, I suppose? Interesting. Yes. But MMA didn't exist yet. This was the original MMA. See, there you go. Even even Vince's father created MMA before we knew it. <laughs> that's nuts. So then, And that's not even the main event. Like the main event was then a 20 man battle royal, which Antonio Noki won. This is a weird fucking show. But wait, so the main event wasn't the women's championship? No. So this not lies. In what, so like the whole event was just all these other matches right. that weren't shown on television. Well, anywhere, this says the. With the exception of maybe Hulk Hogan and Valentine, because it doesn't acknowledge that one as being a dark match. So that might have been shown on WWF television somewhere. Right. 
but everything else was not. Interesting. So they have it. They had an eleven match show. So this. So this. Because I was going to say earlier, I'm familiar with the match. Uh, obviously, we've seen it in documentaries, and we've seen it. You know, like in it with with Richter finally beating Mula. But the piece of info we haven't seen no, the match. We've seen that. That's what I meant. Moment. That's what I meant. We've seen like we know it exists. The the one thing that I did not know was that it was according to this the main event of the pay per view, which you would think the women main event at a pay per view that's a huge deal in 1984. But apparently that's but this is not, not a pay per view. That's not the of course. Well, it's an event, main event of the event. But apparently even that's not the case. This is just lying. But it is though because the it's, only event. It's the only. It's all they right, right. showed. Because, you know, as big of a deal uh, as that was, that's still not in 1980, whatever, that's not going to sell tickets and that's not going to be happy for everybody to go see the show and go, wait, someone else beat Moolah? That's it. Thanks for coming. What the fuck? No more. Right. So they had three more matches after that. Um, well, moving on. Because there's probably also a reason why we only see the the that final moment. Right. It's probably no, not. No, a great I can't match. imagine that late in her career, Fabulous Moolah is doing great work. Um, she did better later. Uh, mm-hmm. so the next one on the on uh, uh on our list here of events, the last. Do you want me to sidestep you real quick to fill in the gaps about the rain? Sure. Tell me about the rain. It falls from the sky. So the clouds. The- the the match where we're trying to figure out oh where was the rain from, it was a it was an event in Puerto Rico, got it. That happened and it was Hulk Hogan versus Big John Studd, but it rained during other matches right, as that, well. That's so they end up doing fucking bear hugs almost the entire time because everybody else that's is what slipping. We, yeah, that's constantly. what we watched because they couldn't you couldn't run the ropes, there was no grip. Yeah, you mm-hmm. couldn't slide and like the ring isn't even a fucking ring anymore. It's just like a blue tarp at this point. It's it's actually red. Oh, the red. apron is blue. Oh, okay. So there's blue all around, but it's actually red it, in the right, ring. So we both misremember yeah. that. Uh, October nineteenth, nineteen eighty five. Wow, was the show. And um, if you look up Puerto Rico WWF rain, you'll see many clips. I I recommend Russell Crapp's recap of it. It's pretty great. There's an atomic drop that Hogan does to Big John Stud, and goes all kinds oh. of wrong. Hogan stayed on his feet. It's you know who I. Yeah, it's uh, it's dangerous. You know what I re- really feel bad for poor Samoa Joe had to stand out there in a suit and tie the whole time and just talk to the crowd. It was just this poor guy. And the poncho, don't forget <laughs> the, the poncho. poncho. Um, that's what made that so funny. Uh, all right, so the next the next one on our list here, an example of you went too far, WWE. A great title for a pay per view that. If it just explained the main event because of a specific story or rivalry would have been good, but instead they went full TNA lockdown where every single match is going to be this. And that was the one and only 2009's breaking point. Great idea. I remember it. I have, I have the DVD. Okay. So every single match you can only win via submission, which means that by the end of the night, you're bored out of your fucking mind <laughs> because while a submission victory is fun and exciting, occasionally th- when, when a ref counts to three, uh, this Pavlovian response occurs that is electric that ends a match. And in this instance, the whole evening, it never happened. <laughs> um, if they just, the main event was like, Hey, there are two people who are both submission specialists who've challenged each other to this match where you can only win by submission, no pinfalls because it's pride or whatever the story is. And you're calling it breaking point because it's who the fuck ever Charlotte versus Becky Lynch. And they both do submissions. I, whatever it is, but it's in 2008? 2009, 2009. Come on. They're just, they're like two year olds. <laughs> I know. I was just coming up with two random people, but unfortunately this was uh, every single match on the card. And but it's a pretty damn good show from what I recall. Really? Yeah, it's the main event is, uh, oddly enough, submission match. It's, oddly enough, it was um, an I quit match, which is all submission. No. Nope. No? The, That's not oh, the main event. Oh, interesting. Okay. So the main event is CM Punk versus Undertaker. Right. For the World Heavyweight Championship. Right. The match before that is John Cena That's versus Randy one. Orton in an I quit match for the WWE Championship. I was, was the main event, but I misremembered. 
And then you might think, oh, well, the real main event was Christian versus William Regal for the ECW championship. I'm trying to... But that this match, uh, or the show also has Legacy versus Degeneration X, a submissions count anywhere match, which is pretty gnarly from what I recall. There's a lot going on here. Yeah, it's just, I, I, and it does sound like, you know, lots of good matches. It just seems like by the end of the night, you want to see someone get pinned. Uh, you want to see somebody take a power move and get pinned. <laughs> Lay on him. Yeah. Hook a leg. I'm trying to think. Lay on him. So, all right, so schoolboys. I want to see schoolboys. So the- what? I'm at a wrestling show. I can say that all I want. I want schoolboys so bad. I feel like that. There's uh, never mind. I'm not going to. I was going to address Skeeter Skyfire in that, but uh, for another day. Um, the. Uh, uh, I quit match is sort of a pass because it's not necessarily a submission move because you could just you just say I quit. Somebody could still hurt you enough where you go, all right, I'm not going to continue anymore, right? So Yeah, you could take uh, salad tongs right. to someone's So balls. those two guys get a pass, right? Taker does the, is it Hell's Gate? Is that what he calls it? All right, yeah. CM Punk, Anaconda Vice. Um, mm-hmm. Chris Jericho, wait, did you say it was Jericho and, and uh, no, you said it was Regal. There it was is Regal. A, there is a Jericho match. It's Jericho versus MVP and Mark Henry. Okay, I don't know what... So you have at least the walls of Jericho, and I suppose even a bear hug by trip uh, by uh, Big Show could be considered a submission. What's M... As is with Mark yeah, Henry. Yeah, Mark Henry. What's MVP's doing? What is he doing for a, a submission finisher? Balling. What is that? He's just... But he gets he gets everything in plus his All balls. Right. That's uh, that's a that's, submission. Uh, quite frankly, sexual assault. Um, Christian and Regal. Regal had the Regal stretch. Right, Regal has the Regal stretch, which is like his STF crossfacey thing that he does. And mm-hmm. uh, what would, would what would Christian be trying? Figure four, blue dot, the blue dot. Mm-hmm. It, it's just like. Just smothers, smothers your, your face. face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just he stands on you like a big brother with a little brother, or or like kneels over mm-hmm. you and pins your shoulders, and then just mushes your face with his hand. He calls it a blue dot. Cody Rhodes and Ted DiBiase versus DX. So Triple H would do the cross face yeah. at this point. I think Shawn Michaels yeah. would too. Cross. Uh, he would also do the figure four, Shawn Michaels, and the sharpshooter as well. Yeah. And then. um Oh, Chris Cody Rhodes. Tim Redbeard. Well, figure four probably as well. Tim Redbeard in chat says says yeah, Christian did. has the cru- Christian had the crucifix. Crucifix is a submission. Isn't that a pin? I think he's just talking about the Christian <laughs> religion. Right, right, right. Christians. Crucifix. Christians have the crucifix. Yes, of course. Uh, and uh, Ted DiBiase would just start draining your bank account <laughs> until you gave up. Oh no, he would be like, "Listen, do you qualify for Section Eight housing? Because if so, I need you to sign this paper." He he put out a phone and you just see your bank account just like dwindle. You like, like I I tap what? out I tap, tap out. out. That money was supposed to be for impoverished families. Um, Breaking yeah, Point. Well. Do I know what I think is sad about Breaking Point? I remember it more as the feature in the video game. Yeah, they pushed yeah, that pretty hard. It's huh? like oh, the new Breaking Point submission uh, system. Which I remember thinking, like, all right, it's pretty. That's pretty good submission. Pretty good, or pretty good uh, way to do submissions in the video game was the breaking point system. Couldn't remember how it worked. Couldn't tell you anymore. But I remember at the time seeing the little breaking point logo fill up. Well, this this one definitely has a couple that I, I might scope out for a watch long because this. Uh, I I do remember the show fondly, and I I guess I could see your point. Submissions I don't feel are so bad compared to. How you how you've uh, framed like the last man standing match, right? Where it's oh we got to reset and we got to count. There's always damage being done with su- with the submission when we have tag right. teams in place. Someone's running in. It seems like they had a v- variables of there's a tag team, there's a singles, there's some titles counts anywhere. Um, I quit. Like it feels like the atmosphere would change up enough. Right. So I'm curious to go back and watch it now if. Uh, if it does feel like, oh my god, I I want schoolboys. I I just remember the the ending to the uh, CM Punk Taker being stupid. Do you remember it? 
They no. recreated the Montreal screw job very stupidly for some reason. They did? Well, they meaning the WWE. No, oh, I gosh. know they've done it a sure, bunch. Sure. I'm surprised that yeah, they also that, did. That's my memory of it. Because it seems we know, like two guys that would be like, no. Listen, we know how good my memory is, so maybe I'm misremembering that entirely, but that's my recollection of it. Okay, let's see here. Uh, the Undertaker eventually applied Hell's Gate and Punk tapped out. However, Theodore Long interrupted but the celebration by informing everyone that the Undertaker submission Hell's Gate was banned by Vicky Guerrero. Long ordered the match to be continued. When the bell rang, Punk immediately applied the Anaconda Vice. And the bell rang to signal the match was over, although the Undertaker did not submit. Regardless of this, Punk retained the title, thus mimicking the Montreal screw job. There it is. Um... And you know why? Because it was in Montreal. Yep. So they did it again in Montreal. They did it for Hogan and Rock too. Uh, we get They're, it, Vince. Like how fucking stop it? How fucking pissed are you if you're in Montreal and you're like, yeah, I'll go to your show. It's been a while, and I'll pay top dollar to go see it. And then, fuck you. Stop doing this. Stop reminding it this. It's bad enough. Of this thing. It's bad enough. All of our hometown heroes lose on their birthdays when they're here. <laughs> that's fucking killing a yeah. town that is just asking those people to not come back um well Egregious. speaking of not coming back we have another one-off on our list here i like how many of these one-offs there are i will say I'm, I'm pleasantly surprised to see these all in the book i thought for sure they would be like let's just leave that out of the encyclopedia we don't need that. in an encyclopedia you can't do that 1998 capital carnage by the way, I like that there's no logos for these. Like Brawl to end it all. Not to be confused with nope, Capital which is Punishment. The next one we'll get there. But the Brawl for All and the Capital Carnage, see there's no logos. They're just like, eh, we just wrote it in red letters. Nope, Jake, that is the logo. <laughs> That's the logo. Oh, that is. I'm is not joking. Because that if you look up Capital was Carnage. It like an in your house, colon, and then that was how it was written or something? I, I think that was kind of towards the end of the in your houses when they were just not really saying it anymore. It might have right. been. Um, nope, you're wrong. Capital just, Carnage had this crazy logo. Which is actually pretty fun. That's not it. That's not the no. what was in the book. It's just I told you, it's just like a bold red letter. Oh, so, OK. I thought I, the that same was thing it. with Brawl to end it all. It's just like, yeah, we just wrote it in bold. We're not going to bother. We don't have print. Well, Brawl to end it all probably didn't no, yeah, have 80s. one. That was just like, it's on we TV. They were like, listen, we don't have print resolution files of these logos that we made for broadcast television. They're only, you know, 80 pixels wide. Um. Anyways, Capital Carnage, 1998. Any recollection of this? Capital Carnage, all I remember was, I, I've only watched it once. I have a VHS. And from what I remember... It had Vinny Jones show up in it and the crowd goes nuts. And this was way before Vinny Jones was anything right. either in the States or I worldwide. Mean, I mean, other than 90, you know, soccer fans knowing who he is, but he didn't have the overall no. action movie. Badass. When persona. did lock stock come out? I think that's later. 1998 this year. That would have been because that movie was very popular to a certain demographic that year. and But that was a trickle down. Sure. Movie. Like that didn't no, hit not right away. That's word of mouth. Yeah. People saying it like when this comes out, people don't know. I'm surprised Vince goes like, yeah, sure. Vinnie Jones. But no, here's the thing. Vinnie Jones showed up like two years later. It would have been a big but fucking deal. This was in the UK and Vinnie Jones was also a former soccer player. Yeah. That's yeah, what I'm yeah. saying. They love right. it. Right. Okay. I understand. But as far as everyone watching this and people, Vinnie Jones doesn't get brought up ever in all of the celebrity, you know, yeah, interactions right. and stuff they did. And it's, I, I don't think they ever try and re, re, uh, reestablish the history with this, rewrite their own history and say like, yeah, we had fucking Vinnie Jones and it was a big deal. But I remember this whole show just kind of being a dud. Well, here's, here's how they write about it in the encyclopedia. Uh, in December of 98, WWE stormed the Capitol. Oh, Ben, yeah, listen, we know how that works. Uh, for a star-studded... Yeah, Vince yeah. did it uh, not too long. Uh, 
for a star-studded event featuring a who's who of the Attitude Era. Just not the Capital American fans are thinking of. Capital Carnage was a rare UK-only pay-per-view event that emanated from London, England. The Rock retained his WWE Championship with a DQ victory over X-Pac. Okay. Uh, who Who isn't excited to watch those two for that? <laughs> that face. Ooh, and ooh. by the way, a DQ victory, the, you couldn't get the job done, Rock, against X-Pac. You needed to get a DQ victory. Oh, wait, no, no, no. DQ victory means that X-Pac would have done something to Rock. Never mind. Or Triple H in China, right, yeah. probably. The New Age Outlaws also held on to their tag team titles. In the night's main event, Stone Cold won a fatal four-way match and toasted the WWE Universe across the pond with a beer celebration that included soccer star Vinnie Jones. They don't even call him an actor in the book. So there you go. See, that's what I mean. They don't... They don't try and change yeah. it. They don't try and make it a big deal. And they never called him again. Well, I I, I don't know that to right, be true. Sure. I don't. It's he he is a guy that it was it was a wrong, wrong right. timing. Also, by the way, a guy who would be very, very fun doing that. Like during the guest host era, I know that he maybe didn't have much going on. He's in the fucking condemned with Stone Cold. Right. Like he's in the right. second movie. Yeah, I mean, there's a connection for sure. So you just do a couple of video packages on the guy and you go like, yeah, Vinnie Jones, he kicks ass. He sh if he was born at a different time, he probably would have been here. We probably would have tried to recruit him. Yeah, I was trying to look up to see if there was any other things, but it's only the yeah, it's only that one event. I was saying like maybe there was another thing that we missed. Oh, he's also in a movie with Wade Barrett. Did you is that the one you're talking about? No, because I said yeah. the condemned was right, Stone right, Cold right. Steve Austin. A I don't know what movie this film. is, but here's him and uh, and Wadey Boy. That's their Tinder. Oh, um, by the way, I know that we have all the tech. Swipe left for Vinny. Swipe right. Do you like for how Wade. we have all the technology set up? Like I could share screens. I could do stuff, and I'm just like, I'll just hold my phone up to the camera like a plebe. This is just it's easy. Uh, yeah. What movie was this? Because we have to add this. Uh. In the new movie, I Am Vengeance, Retaliation. That's the name of the movie. Oh, I think that one is free on Voodoo with ads. There you go. Um, oh, they've they've really shitting down the poster from what it, I guess, used to be. So you, you have this on uh, VHS or a DVD? Capital Carnage? Uh, Capital Carnage, I have on VHS, yes. Um, well, from the UK capital <laughs> to storming... Uh, the U.S. Capitol, uh, which I'm sure a lot of WWE fans did. Um, Capital Punishment is the next one on the list. And the last one. This is the last one on these pages. Uh, we only got to, see, to the beginning of C. 2011. It was a one and done. For some reason, I thought there was more than that. Well, it's another one that's bad. I also remember, like, first off, Capital Punishment. Uh, I get it. It's in the Capitol, punishment, you know, like fighting WWE. But it's also like, yeah, I think most people are against capital punishment. <laughs> like most people are against uh the the what ultimately is capital punishment. And if I'm not mistaken. But not wrestling it, fans uh, in the moment because it's all about, well, don't use your words to talk it out. Go fucking sure. tear them apart. Go go get your But am I mistaken in remembering that Barack Obama recorded something for this pay-per-view? Okay, so this is where it gets all kinds of fucked. So the poster is caricatures with Barack in the middle. Oh, is he? Okay. So that's awful. I think what you're thinking of, there's a, there's, uh, I want to say it's McCain, uh, John McCain, Hillary Clinton, and Barack Obama during an election. Oh, they all have a quick video that's like a the, the it's clearly being sent out to all right. brands of like hey this is uh, I'm this person please go out and vote it's really important god bless america blah right. blah blah i think that's the barack thing you're thinking of at this show they say barack obama is going to be there barack obama is going to be there and they do much worse than what they did with um fucking the fake Bill Clinton at a WrestleMania. Oh, no. They have an actor come out. 
yeah, this poor guy who's doing an impression comes out and, uh, I'm trying to even see it in the recap and it's not listed here for some reason. I'm more than positive it's at the show and I'm trying to remember who I thought it was Booker T. Oh, someone comes out and just talks with him. Uh, all right. So give me a minute on this. What I'm thinking of, wait, is this it? I'm also trying to find stuff on YouTube because I've, I'm trying to remember what the event was. Uh, of course it doesn't say it. It just says Barack Obama addresses the WWE universe. Yeah, that was the ad. Yeah, I'm speaking of ads. I'm listening to the ad for uh, <laughs> Applebee's at the moment. Ooh, uh, can you hear my? Can you hear my phone through the thing? It should be connected to the Bluetooth. Yeah, yeah. I don't think they can listen to it, but yeah. He's clearly reading off of a teleprompter. It's an important time in America, not just because the reign of Randy Orton will soon be coming to an end. (laughs) Like he's, yeah. That's what I mean. Like all of them had it. McCain, Hillary, they all had a little snippet to go like, hold on. I said a wrestling thing. This isn't what I'm thinking of, but I'm clearly it happened more than once. So, um, but the, the capital punishment thing is Obama impersonator. And I'm just trying to find fucking footage of it. I can't believe it's not write... as bad that everybody's just not posting it everywhere. Uh, was it Hillary Clinton versus Barack Obama where they had a match? Because that just came up in a search. That's another thing. There's also the fucking Rosie O'Donnell versus Donald Trump thing that they kept doing this for a while they kept trying oh to act God. like five most awkward matches in wwe people. history um well in any case that's not written about in the it book. was it was it was bad <laughs> they like crowd is pissed it's bad it's the one with our truth and john cena for the wwe well, title they completely omit any of that stuff from this all it states in the book is uh the proceedings at capital punishment were dominantly by rivalries as intense as the age-old Capitol Hill rivalry between the Republicans and Democrats. Rey Mysterio faced off against CM Punk. Alex Riley uh, scored revenge against The Miz. John Cena defended the championship against an unhinged R-Truth. And while Randy Orton was able to keep his World Heavyweight Championship by defeating Christian, two other titles did change hands. Ezekiel Jackson claimed the IC title when he forced his uh, former core cohort Wade Barrett to submit to a backbreaker and Dolph Ziggler with some help from Vicky Guerrero put Kofi Kingston to sleep and left DC as the new United States champion. So two titles both changed hands by submission and it wasn't breaking point. It was capital punishment. My God. Uh, yeah. It doesn't sound like a great, I mean, some of these matches seem like Mysterio over CM Punk. We watched that match, not that match. We watched a match with the two of them. That was delightful. I'm sure that was fine. And I don't, I remember liking the Orton uh, okay. Christian thing because at one point Orton and Christian, that was, this must've been during the one more match era where I feel like Christian and him were both firing in all cylinders where like he just couldn't, you know, couldn't get the job done, but he was always really close. Yeah. This is probably good guy Orton and bad guy Christian oh, gotcha. still. Um, so yeah, there, I think there's some good undercard stuff, but I did find it and it's right before the main event too, to fucking kill oh. all that momentum. So in a breakdown, it's, uh, Barack Obama, the fake Obama comes out to a podium, talks you to the crowd. You could share screen if you want and everybody will see it on Zoom. Nope. nope it's a oh, okay. recap. <laughs> don't tell me to share stuff. You're the one showing shit <laughs> I know, on your but phone. you're looking at it on your computer, so you don't have that option. No, I'm Got I'm it. reading it because I couldn't find any video of anybody putting it up. <laughs> they scrubbed so, it from all the internet. <laughs> he, so Obama's talking and doing this, and it's going on way too long. And the Booker T interrupts and shows him the Spinner Rooney. Great. So in a nobody wants anything to do with any of this. This is fucking terrible, and not even people are posting snippets of it online to see the dread that it was. Because I went and I watched John Cena 
in our truth because we talked about it for a watch long potentially. And I saw this beforehand and I went, what? Hold on. And I watched this segment and I was like, oh my God, I wonder this never showed up again. That rough. Is it's, it's so bad because it doesn't elicit any reactions. It's not acknowledged that that's a fake Barack Obama. Booker T looks stupid because he's going in there with a fake Barack Obama and going like, hey, man, I'm going to show you this thing. And then the guy can't do it. It's not like he did it great. Mm. And everyone goes like, holy shit. And then Booker beats him up. He's like, that's not him. Nothing. Nothing that we want. It's it's just treating us like we're fucking right. idiots. Which is, you know, a part of the WWE brand in fairness. <laughs> in this time, it yeah. certainly was. So that's why I think it's one of those egregious segments. I'm going to assume you don't have this one on DVD. <laughs> uh, when did you, when do you, when does your collection end of home video? Like once the network came out and you were like, well, or even before then. No, after, yeah. cause they still made stuff that I thought, well, they're going to edit this someday or this has special features. I was still getting WrestleManias for a while. I was still getting WrestleManias on Blu-ray. And stuff like that. They still make shit sure, too. Yeah. The whole thing of oh, they're stopping. No, no, no. no they're no, never they gonna make them. That's free money. You're not. You know what I mean? Like people are always gonna. Uh, you're gonna see them at Walmart's forever because people are still gonna be like, oh, I'm gonna buy this WrestleMania thing for my kid. Right. Yeah, because I don't want to buy a whole right. other network to try and stream it and watch it. Like I'm buying this yep. one event. So when I see it, I go like, oh, well, maybe if it had a digital copy with it, there'd be some stuff I would get. But I stopped getting WrestleManias. There's one where I was just like, that sucked. I'm not buying that one. <laughs> so, um, uh, I got a few more things for free. I'm trying to, I can't remember the last thing I bought, but I know I had like the Brock Lesnar Blu ray, the Sting yeah, DVD I, set, the Miz I guess DVD I meant, set. There were a few things. I guess I meant I, more so like the, the pay per view events. Cause yeah, there's definitely some of those like specials that like I had like the, best in the world blu-ray and like stuff like that we go oh well, i want some of those collections and docu-series ones but i meant more so like pay-per-view events pay-per-view events was probably a the last thing a purchase was uh, physical format was a wrestlemania right. so 20 wow it's gotta be one of wow. the 20s so yeah somewhere gotcha. around there it wasn't 30 what? Because I don't, I don't recall. Do you recall that what year the WWE Network started? It was for WrestleMania thirty or twenty nine. So, it was starting for either a month before WrestleMania yeah. or on WrestleMania. Because I thought fourteen. There's no. I was gonna buy it on pay per view if right. I didn't go. Because they didn't trust it to not totally crash. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it came out February. Oh wait, was that that I read that right? Yeah, February of 2014. It launched in the U.S. and Canada. So I think that was WrestleMania 30 then. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It, it, it was released in the U.S. and Canada in July of, 20, of 2014. This is a really dumbly worded thing. It says, WWE Network was launched on February 24th in the United States in Canada. Oh, okay, no, that is right. Terribly worded. What the fuck? It was launched on February 24th in the United States, in Canada in July of that year, and expanded to Asia in August. So yeah, it was February of 2014. I was just curious to how that coincides with your like, yeah, I'm going to stop, but. It didn't, it didn't affect it because I also didn't foresee the network lasting forever. I thought they would remove stuff. Right. I thought there would always be specials and weird things that, that would never happen. I think there were some DVDs still of uh, the Legends Roundtable stuff right. where they finally released Piper Piper's Pit where he interviewed himself right. uh, on DVD. That was like a weird Roddy Piper's Greatest Hits Coliseum video segment um, that was only available right, right. there. WWE wasn't doing a lot of their vault on youtube and i just i just didn't have trust that if i don't have it i'll never right. be able to watch it again well yeah you're so I you're right though it. that was wrestlemania 30 was the very first ever network wrestlemania 
Um, well, that'll do it for uh, for these two pages, 268 and 269, if you're putting it into a spreadsheet for us, um, of the mm-hmm. WWE Encyclopedia. Um, it, yeah, I'm curious to whether or not we're going to pull one of these other pages that are 10 more after this of just pay-per-view and special events. Someday. Um, well, that'll do it for the program this week. Uh, thanks to everybody who joined us live, uh, especially Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollinate, the current PWP champ. If you would like to uh, to challenge Andrea Beeler in that Championship Palski Battle Royal next week, you got to become a Championship Palski over at patreon.com slash PWPalskis. That's also how you get access to these live streams uh, every single patron gets access to the live stream. It doesn't matter what tier you sign up for. You can tune into the live stream. We want to encourage more people to hang out and chat with us and uh, just, you know, be a bunch of wrestling nerds with us. Uh, so that's open to everybody uh, who can throw us a few bones over at patreon.com slash PW Powskis. Yeah, this one uh, had less sexcapades than I thought from the chat. Well, but listen, you know. it's because we got premium live events. We didn't get the wrestlers who have all the sex capades. That's why. Well, you know, Hey, you can still go to a live show and then go, Hey, what's going to be going after the show. Right. That's true. Um, also we didn't get any of the events, uh, you know, like we were only a through B. So if we would have gotten to S and T, some of those sexy letters in there. Oh yeah, that's right. We got a little bit of C. Just a little bit of C. Yeah, we 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 sat we got on to that CA. Seat. We didn't get to CO though. When we get to CO, oh, that's when it really gets hot. Uh, you get you get to ride a little bit of that C, and I think that's good for everybody. Um, uh, uh, what else we got to do at the end of these things? We tap that A. <laughs> we're behind the B, and we wrote on some C. What what, what else you want? <laughs> oh, Scott Narver. Um, hey, follow us on social media at PW Palskis. We don't post a bunch of bullshit and crowd up your feeds. You can find us on Twitter and Instagram, Facebook, all the places uh, that people tend to be. Uh, also, if it's been a while, hey, do us a favor. Head on over to PWPowskis.com. Click the shop there. Check out some merchandise. Maybe snag yourself a shirt, a mug. Um, we got hats on the way. Uh, you know, take a take a gander. Hats like uh, that? No, we're not going to sell scally caps, although I wish we would. Um what is that called? A scally yeah, cap? Lots of different names for them. Flat caps, uh, school, uh, uh, newsboy caps, scally caps. Schoolboy? Schoolboy school school cap? Say, I meant to say newsboy, but the wrestling has infected my brain. Yeah. Hopefully it's wrestling. Um, what else? I don't know what else we're going to no, be I meant what else the story. I, I meant what else we have to do. We have to thank our current PW Palskis. Yes, all of our Powskis, uh, thank you so much. It's the only place where we hand out retribution hand names as out. well as maximum male model names. So if you want us to come up with some dumb nicknames for you, so you you know, you know have other logins <laughs> for any of your sketchy uh, places or, you know, for gamer tags, because you're like, I got nothing. Uh, all my, my name's used up, and I put in so many dirty <laughs> numbers afterwards. Now we got you covered. So thank you to AJ0314, a.k.a. Binary, Alex Pierce, a.k.a. Figs, a.k.a. Zitoys, Alice Raider, a.k.a. Invasion, a.k.a. Eve Joie, Andrea Beeler, a.k.a. Pollen Hate, a.k.a. Achoo, the Test, a.k.a. the current PWP champ, Gilbert Short, a.k.a. Goliathon, a.k.a. Battle Under Ruse, Mass Lama, a.k.a. Spitz, a.k.a. Jacara Lover, Michael Beltran, a.k.a. Limestone, a.k.a. La Naturelle, Miguel Diaz, a.k.a. Bipod. Mike Lucas, a.k.a. Hackensack, a.k.a. Luge Testicle. Suicide, a.k.a. A.k.a. Tim Bemis, a.k.a. War Trek. Tim Redbeard, a.k.a. Blood Fuzz, a.k.a. Blue De Fuse. Tom Hader, a.k.a. Cupid. And Tony Griggs, a.k.a. Big Griggs, a.k.a. Grand Griswold. Thanks to each and every one of you for your continued support of the show. Uh, you hear us say it all the time, patreon.com slash PW Palskis. Consider throwing a few bucks our way. Um, and uh, listen, we, we see the numbers. We know how many people listen to the show and how many people tune in and hang out with us in the pod feed. Um, stark comparison compared to the patrons. And we are thankful for everybody we got, but we always want a little more um, because it's the people that make this fun. It's, America. it's the community. By the way, if you're oh. not on the Discord, you're missing out. Discord's completely free. It has nothing to do with Patreon. 
it's just a really fun place to hang out and talk with a bunch of fellow nerds um, to catch up with what's happening week to week. It's a fun place to be during every episode of every wrestling event, whether WWE, AEW, whatever you're watching. We have, you know, New Japan fans in there. People are chatting about everything at any given point in time. Uh, so yeah, Ted DiBiase Jr. Carl, updates. Yeah, so many updates um, on uh, Ted DiBiase Jr. and uh, people singing poorly all at the Discord, which again, completely free. You can find that link at pwpowskis.com. Uh, What's the people singing poorly? That's the uh, Sasha Banks at that press conference where she like sang a song and it was awful. Oh, yeah, no, it was, really? It was, it was awkward. I think I she got punched that. in the mouth afterwards, though. So I guess it was a, ultimately a win for the wrestling fans. Some old Japanese guy like, <laughs> stop. It wasn't like kayfabe. It was just like somebody just stood up and went, I can't take this and just punched her in the mouth. This is bullshit. <laughs> um, all right, that'll do it. Um, I'm at Jake Lloyd Bacon. He's at Scott Narver. We're at PW Palskis. Uh, thanks for joining us. It's always a bust. Hanging out with you, the Pro Wrestling Palskis. More than 400 years ago, there was a man who lived in Stratford upon Avon named Shaxper. This is the man many consider to be the greatest writer of all time. Of course, the few things we really know about this guy are that he sold grain, didn't bother to teach his children to read or write, and was kind of a jerk to his wife, especially in his last will and testament. Meanwhile, 100 miles away from Stratford, on Elizabethan stages, plays were being performed written by someone signing the name William Shakespeare, a writer who often lampooned the monarchy and put his life at risk by doing so. The sort of thing that one may use a pseudonym for, sort of to, you know, protect their identity. Surely you see where I'm going with this. A mistake was made all those years ago, and we attributed those legendary works to the wrong dude. Which begs the question, who really was William Shakespeare? Join me, Stephen Sable, as I invite historians, researchers, lawyers, artists, authors, and more to explore this fascinating mystery of Shakespeare authorship on my podcast called Don't Quill the Messenger. You can hear it now at don'tquillthepodcast.com or wherever you're listening to this podcast right now. Dragon Wagon.